Tip Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tip Tut. <laughs> uh, it's not rude. It's not. It just sounds it. <laughs> um, today, we're looking at uh, After Effects screen replacement using the uh, perspective corner pin tool. Um, you can see I've already done it here. Um, using the little tip tut uh, intro that I have on my channel. Um, it's not perfect. You can see that like it slips a bit at the end there, um, although it's not terribly noticeable and it'll do for um, an example. Um, so without any further ado, let's dive right into it. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the footage you capture um, is of decent quality um, and you really need to prepare beforehand what shots you're actually going to replace the screen uh, on because planning is key. It's everything in this part because poor quality footage means you can't do this um, effect. Now, you can see here, I've just got a quick shot of my screen. Um, I know that the track is good up to about three seconds, 10. So I'll probably put that into a new composition. Now, I'm just gonna quickly create a new folder called tutorial um, so that we can start from scratch. So if I right click on the piece of footage and choose new comp from selection, drop that inside the tutorial folder. This gives us a new comp for the screen replacement. Um, and we know that there's no lingering files from the previous composition, so that's fine. Um, I wanna trim this down to about three seconds so that I'm not hanging around all day whilst it renders and um, tracks the motion. So we wanna double click inside our footage here. And this will bring up the menu for the actual piece of footage. Um, and you're going to want to open your tracker window. Now, if you don't have that, that's under window and then tracker here. You can just click that to bring it up. Um, and you're going to want to hit track motion. Um, and under the track type, we want to be looking at perspective corner pin. Now, you see that's going to give you four track points here um, instead of the usual one that you get. And each track point is surrounded by two boxes, which you can adjust and you can also move the position of each track point. Now, these bounding boxes basically tell the computer the range in which it's allowed to look for the pixel that it's trying to track. Um, and um, the inner one basically is the area in which it the greatest area in which it will search for that pixel. Um, so now what you want to do is just line up um, as, as neatly as possible the uh, small X's at the center of each bounding, bounding area with the corners of the screen. Now you can see why here contrast is important. Uh, using a black screen probably isn't actually a great idea, but if you can get away with it, it is good because it means you can then replace all these screen reflections back on top of the footage. However, it does mean that the higher the contrast between the two pixels or points that you're trying to track, the more success you're going to have with this technique. Um, so you can see I accidentally there tracked the end point of the screen rather than the beginning of the footage. Um, that's not a problem. You can track anywhere because as you can see with these analyze things down here, you can analyze forward or you can analyze backwards. So now that we've lined up the four points and we're happy with where they are, we're going to see how this works. Um, I am actually going to expand these a little bit, give it a bit more freedom. And we'll see analyze backwards because we're at the end of the footage. And as you can see, it will start to track the footage uh, frame by frame and try to keep the pixels in the same place. Um, and we'll jump back in once my computer's had a go at doing that. Okay, and we are back. Now, as you can see, it may take a couple of minutes to do um, track the footage. It's a detailed process. Um, I'm obviously running a whole bunch of encoding software as well, which probably slowed it down a bit. Um, but you can see now we've actually got a rather neat tracking point of all four um, corners of the area which we want to replace, which is great. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in some of this old footage here. Um, I've actually got an intro footage here. If I drop that on top, you can see this is the um, little intro that I have at the beginning of my videos. Um, and if we make sure that we double click on this piece of footage here, um, the way we are going to uh, pin those four corners is by editing the target. So if we edit this target here and make sure that it is applied to um, intro.mp4 and hit OK, and then just hit apply and bam, there we go. It drops you straight back in the composition. Um, it'll show each, every single uh, individual keyframe of this tracking, which you can edit individually if need be. Um, but if not, you can just take a look and see how that looks. Um, now that looks pretty good, probably better actually than the first time I tried this. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't actually look like the footage is on screen at the moment. What we want to do is uh, all those nice reflections, which you can see on this screen here, we want to apply that to the footage. 
And the way you do that is you just choose a better blending mode. Now, because I've got a dark background, um, letting the uh, black light through using multiply probably give us a um, effect that's too dark which you can see, um, it's letting in through the black. So what we actually want to do is let through the white light, which is screen. Um, and that looks like it's seated a bit more realistically on the screen now. Um, I find, however, that when you're looking at a computer monitor without realizing there's actually a vignette, a, a sort of a slight vignette around the footage. So if you right click on your piece of footage and choose pre-compose and call that one uh, inner or anything really, um, that's fine. It will not, um, if the, the, the tracking will still be applied to it, that's not a problem. Um, but what we can do now is go inside this composition and it will bring up um, just the flat footage for us to use so that we can put things on top, such as this vignette that I have pre-prepared here. Um, I just grab this from online and we can set this to multiply, see how that looks. Probably a bit intense, actually. So we can just drop the opacity down to say 75%. And then when we go back to our screen replacement, you can see it gives it that burned in look. Um, and that actually makes it look a lot more realistic as if it's actually on the screen. So let's pre-render uh, pre that and have a look at what we see. That looks pretty good to me. Um, so as you can see, it's actually as simple as that when it comes to replacing screens and After Effects. Um, let me know how I did in this tutorial, my first one on the channel. Um, so if there's any advice for me, I'd love to hear it. Um, and let me know what you want to see more of as well in the comments below and things like that. Um, if you liked what you saw, make sure to stick around, subscribe. There'll be more on the way. If you didn't, um, <laughs> well, that's also fine. There's plenty of other tutorial places out there online, which are much better than me, I'm sure. Um, so I hope to see you next time. And until then, take care. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.